Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Game Master and welcome to my channel. Well, today we'll be taking another look at the Neptunia series. Perhaps too much of a look if you ask me, as this is probably one of the most perverted games for the Neptunia series, and let's just say one that's in poor taste. That said, outside of the lewdness, there's an actually pretty decent brawler here, with the storyline that's slim, but still has a lot of humor to it. The story in this one has probably the least narrative of any of the Neptunia games, as it's there, but there's not much of it. Outside of the initial few missions and initial story points to set up the whole game, there's not much evolution past the basic premise, and that is um, two game magazine journalists named Disekuko and Famitsu, which are references to two of the biggest Japanese gaming magazines, are doing stories on the CPUs and the CPU candidates as they go about doing quests and killing monsters. And yeah, that's basically the whole story. The game's villain, which is called Next Generation Mech, is just there. No backstory or motive, it's just there to be the final boss. And yes, a few jokes in a plotline that's existence is due to Neptune's stupidity that go absolutely nowhere. We don't see much of it or the problems it creates in general. There's just quests to do and we clear them out and Neptune makes a few meta jokes. Yeah, it's not a good story, but since there's not much there, I'll take it over a story where that's bad and has a lot of it. So there's not much narrative to bog this one down. As far as some of the extra lewdness goes, the girls do make a few jokes about it at the beginning of the game, and Denkeikuku and Famitsu also do a few jokes on the side as the game progresses. The jokes are funny, but they wear thin by the end of the game. So why do they have this extra bit of lewdness? Well, the Neptunia series pokes fun of everything and usually likes to parody series and companies that have worked on it prior. Tamsoft here is known for their Sinra Kagura series, which Neptunia U here is taking a great deal of inspiration from and probably mocking just a little bit of. One of the things the both games have in common is the destructible clothing. Here's the difference. Sinra Kagura has the one being a bit too busty, but nonetheless fully grown and has it doing a sexy moe type of game. Basically, ages can easily be altered to be of an adult age without anyone questioning it if it's ever brought up. Well, Neptunia, which is meant to be more comical, is more on the cute and much younger looking end. Basically, Sinra Kagura, you can have me believe that all of these women I'm ogling are legal age. Neptune and her squad are all jailbait, with the exception of Vert. And yes, I knew, do know that the legal age in Japan is 14, and I would say that Neptune still looks like she'd be under the legal limit there. And don't get me started on ROM and RAM. And yes, they are playable. And yes, their clothes can be torn to shreds too. And no, I'm not going to show it to you. I'm kind of surprised they got this past the SRB and the game's got a teen rating. And not given the full M rating despite not showing as much as the Cinderella Kagura games. Still, I probably right when I say given the age of the characters and the way they look it's no surprise to me they got rid of this feature in its sequel game which is uh, the Blanc plus Neptune versus zombie game that I reviewed a year ago that I think is complete crap. The gameplay is for the most part pretty simple but it is kind of fun. Basically choose from either the CPU or the CPU candidates and you can also play as the two journalists and basically go out and complete quests with the exception of few that are somewhat puzzle oriented. Most of the time the missions and quests will fall into either beat a certain amount of enemies up or find a boss and beat it and oftentimes you don't manage to find the boss until you destroy tons of enemies. The battle system is comparable to most 3D brawlers. A bunch of enemies appear on screen and you button match your way to defeating them. X for quick attacks, Y for strong, and stringing them together gives you combos. 
As you beat up bad guys, two things will fill a special move meter and a transformation meter. The special move meter lets you fire off one of the girl's special moves, and if you fill the transformation to half or more, you can fire up their HDD forms, which are a lot faster and more stronger, and you can dispatch the monsters quicker. Overall, I thought the characters in this one were more balanced than in the Neptune plus Blanc vs. Zombies. They are, for the most part, available from the beginning, and that way you can level them up easier and more evenly. Like I said, last time I just had to choose Uni and then jump around like an idiot while locked on to win. Here, Uni doesn't have any real jump attack combos and has to stay in place while she fires her gun. She can spin sometimes when completing a combo, but no jump moves to get her out of the way. She can only shoot and move in her transformed HDD mode. This means I had to use the other girls and keep my teams in balance. Also, some missions limit the people you can pick to a certain group, like you can only pick characters from last station, or you have to either pick uh, someone who is either a full CPU or a CPU candidate. So it's wise to keep your character's levels in balance, and I found leveling not to be too hard. Also helping is that you get medals from your kills and you can use these to pick up power-ups that unlock for everyone as well as extra equipment for certain characters. The only area where the plus zombie games win is the arenas themselves. They are all just cut out from other hyper-dimensional Neptunia games. Yeah, I've seen this volcano area before. But that said, the arenas are at least done in interesting ways, and I didn't mind fighting through them again. All in all, I won't lie, this game is also a bit repetitive, but that's the way most of these brawlers are. I didn't find this nonsense funny or a turn-on, but I did see myself getting the $3 I paid for it. Graphically, it's about the same as most of the Neptunia games. Similar looking character sprites, same background, same animation for the storybook scene. Nothing really knocking my socks off. It's not the worst looking game I've ever seen, but it's far from the best. When it comes to the sound, we heard all these soundtracks before. At least the voice acting is good with Melissa Fawn, Wendy Lee, and several other well-known voice actor dubbers. Providing their voices here, I had no problem listening to the dialogue, so I can give the game that at least, but the music is only so-so, and it's repetitive, and they keep liking to use it in all of these Neptunia games. Clear quests, right? You like to keep things simple, don't you, Neptune? But you're right. All that talk was unnecessary. Ah, flattery will get you anything you want. So, Hyperdimensional Neptunia U Action Unleashed does have some pretty decent action sequence, and it's still fun despite some of its oddness. Would I buy this game for $30? <laughs> no! Heck no. Put this one on your wish list. When it drops down to like $3 or less, it might be worth a pickup. I don't feel like I got scanned out of $3 with this. But there's no way in hell would I recommend this game for $30. Again, like I said, too repetitive and just a little bit skimpy on the narrative due to a game series that's known for its made humor makes it hard for me to recommend. It's got some decent action. Pick this one up when it's deeply discounted, but don't buy it at full price.